Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In this first video for lecture 25, we're going to talk about the idea of polynomial division. Uh, and there's two types of division we're going to talk about in this lecture. For this video, we're going to get into the idea of what's typically referred to as long division of polynomials. And in the next video, we'll talk about synthetic division, which is an abbreviation of it. And it turns out that dividing polynomials is essentially the same way that we divide integers. And I want to try to convince us of that before we proceed to do this example. If we were trying to divide integers, you might take something like 107 and divide that by, say, 5. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for a multiple of 5 that goes into 10. Because, uh, you know, 1's too small, so we need to have the two digits there. So we need to look for a multiple. And we can take 2 times 5, right? 2 times 5 would be 10 itself, we subtract. Uh, the difference turns out to be zero. We then bring down what's left over, we get a seven. S then we repeat the process. Five goes into seven exactly one time. We subtract from it five. Seven minus five is a two. And five, are, five can't go into two, two is too small. So we end up with this remainder of two. Uh, in other words, uh, we have the following observation that 107 is exactly 21 times 5 plus 2. So we have this quotient and we have this remainder. You know, we could do division with decimals here, but when we first learned division, we probably learned it with quotient and remainder. And we could write this with like mixed numbers versus improper fractions, right? If we take the number 107 divided by 5. As a mixed number, we write this as 21 and 2 fifths, which be aware that 21 and 2 fifths really just means we're taking 21 plus 2 fifths. There's no multiplication going on there. We just often suppress, suppress the, the plus sign right there. And so again, we have our quotient and our remainder right here. When it comes to division of polynomials, the same principle is going to come into play. We're going to first take the numerator. So if we take uh, 6x squared minus 26 plus 12, this we want to think of as the numerator of the fraction that's going to be divided by x minus 5, the denominator. So we write our numerator or our dividend, same thing, 6 minus x squared minus 26x plus 12. You're going to write this thing in descending order for organizational purposes. Your dividend, your numerator is going to go inside this block. And then to the left, we're going to write our divisor, aka the denominator here, x minus 4. And so then we have to ask ourselves, how many times does x minus 4 divide into this? But we don't have to use all of the digits, so, so to speak, right? We only use the 10 when we divide it by 5 right here. And so when it comes to the divisor, we're only going to look at the leading terms right here. So we ask ourselves, because this is a much easier question, how many times does x divide into 6x squared? Well, that actually turns out to be some type of monomial expression. We're going to take 6x squared and divide it by x, which that gives us just a 6x. And we're then going to record that on top, but we're not going to record it on the top digit. We're going to record it based upon its place value. Since this is a linear term, you have x to the first, we're going to record this over the x to the first portion right there. So we get a 6x. This was like when we wrote the 2 over here with the integers. Okay. And so next, we're going to take the divisor, x minus 4, and we're going to times it by this partial quotient. So we're going to get 6x times x minus 4, and this gives us a 6x squared minus 24x. And then we're going to record this below 6x squared minus 24x, much like we wrote the 10 over here. But then we subtracted the 10, so we have to subtract the 6x squared and the negative 24x right here. You're going to see that the 6x squared minus 6x squared, those are going to cancel each other. Now we're going to have a negative 24, a negative 26x. We're going to subtract from that a negative 24x, which actually makes it a positive. So you get negative 26x plus 24x, which gives us a negative 2x. And then we're going to bring down the next term right here, uh, which is a 12. And this process then repeats itself. We ask ourselves, how many times does the divisor x minus 4 go into this? But we can ask that question by just looking at leading terms. How many times does x go into negative 2x? So if we ask ourselves that, we take negative 2x and divide it by x. That is going to give us a uh, just a negative 2. Negative 2. We're going to record that on top. Negative 2 right here. Then we're going to take the negative 2 and we're going to times it by our divisor. 
So we get negative two times x minus four. This gives us negative two x plus eight, for which we could record that here, negative two x plus eight. But then we have to subtract it from above, for which case then the leading terms will cancel out. If we chose our coefficients correctly, those will cancel out. And now we're left with 12 minus eight will be a positive four. But four is much too small to divide by x here because the degree is too small. So this actually turns out to be our remainder. We get this remainder of four. And so keeping track of things, our quotient is then six x minus two and our remainder is then the number four. The remainder should always have as its degree something smaller than the divisor. Our divisor was a linear polynomial. It has a degree one. So the only thing smaller than that would be a degree zero polynomial, which is a constant like we see right here. And so then gathering this information together, we can say a couple things. So for example, we can say that six X squared minus 26 X plus 12, this factors in the following way. We're gonna have X minus four times six X minus two, and then plus four right here. And so what do we see? We see the original dividend, AKA the numerator. We see the divisor, AKA the denominator. Here we see the quotient, six X minus two, and then we see the remainder here. Our goal, whenever we have these polynomials, is you're gonna write, we're gonna write F of X, the numerator, as our divisor, G of X, times Q of X, the quotient, plus R of X, the remainder. This is our goal. We can also think of this as a mixed number, right? So in a mixed number, we start off with this improper fraction, 6x squared minus 6x plus 12. This sits above x minus 4. We can think of this right here as this improper fraction. What do I mean by improper fraction? Improper fractions, like we saw above, 107 over 5, this would suggest that the numerator is either bigger than or equal to the denominator. And so we could kind of reduce it down a little bit. The same thing going on here, our numerator uh, it has a degree two, our denominator has a degree one. So since the denominator is smaller degree than the numerator, we say this is improper. Uh, well, we can write this as a mixed number, right? What does a mixed number mean? A mixed number means you have a whole number part and then you have your remainder sitting above the divisor. When it comes to polynomials, the whole number part, that is the part with no fraction would be a polynomial. And so we're gonna get six X minus two, that's our quotient. And then we add to it, a proper fraction, which is gonna be four over X minus four. So we could argue that this right here is our so-called mixed number, but we shouldn't call it a mixed number. It's like a mixed polynomial because we have a whole number part, a polynomial part right here. And then we have this rational function part uh, for which uh, it's a proper fraction. The numerator, which has degree zero, is smaller than the denominator, which has degree one. And this demonstrates how we can perform polynomial division or so-called long division. And it mimics the exact same long division formula that we learned for dividing whole numbers back in grade school. And in the next video, I'm going to do some more examples of this long division of polynomials. Uh, and so take a look at that if we want to see some more practice.